people know this, that food stamps are our nation's most important anti-hunger program. It's a dynamic program. It's able to respond to the temporary economic needs of families across the country. In a good economy, spending is low, and in bad times, spending temporarily, and I emphasize temporarily, rises. Much like unemployment, that is the right thing to do, to protect those who are the most vulnerable in our society. And because of the current economy, the program helps to feed over 46 million Americans a day, at least 21 million of them are kids. More than 70% of them are in households with children. 93% of food stamp benefits go to households that are living in poverty, and simply put, those families are living on less than $18,530 a year for a family of three, or less than $22,500 for a family of four. Um, let me... Uh, on average, SNAP provides less than $5 a day, less than $1.50 per meal per recipient. In 2010, food stamps helped keep 4 million Americans out of poverty, half of whom were kids. It also seems that an increasing number of households with veterans rely on the program to put food on the table. Over $100 million of food stamp funds were used at commissaries between June 2011 and June 2012. And it is likely that roughly one and a half million veteran households receive SNAP. In short, this program is a lifeline for millions of American families right now who need help to get back on their feet. Hungry Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck. I brought this article with me, I, I, I won't go into it, but this was in the New Haven Register. I represent the third district of Connecticut. Uh, New Haven is one of the 25 towns, it's the largest town, and this was uh, last Friday, July 13th. Three churches planned free food day on Saturday. I can take any paper in the state of Connecticut, and locally, this is what is being done. Um, a lot of people lost their jobs, their homes, and their cars. And we are trying to restore faith and love back into the community and do more for the community. The woman said, well, food, the most important thing is to inspire people to stay strong enough in a tough economy and a difficult situation. The name of this effort is called Stop the Pain. And that's literal. That is true today of what's happening around the world. Time and again, the House majority has slashed deeply into anti-hunger and nutrition programs. Um, and I hope this isn't going to offend anyone here, but I think Susan knows and other people know that I, I just speak my mind on these issues <laughs> and my experience on these issues. Deep cuts into the anti-hunger and nutrition programs while leaving tax breaks for the wealthiest 1% or 2% of the people in this nation. Just two months ago, Republicans passed legislation to offset the sequester cuts. That's for defense appropriations. I come from a defense-dependent state, so I support defense. But in order to avoid defense sequestration, as was agreed to in the Budget Control Act, a whole variety of other programs were cut and had to pull back to make up the difference. So to offset those two questions. It's a deep series of cuts to the safety net, including more than $36 billion from food stamps. So many of you here are, are students of the Farm Bill. You know what it's all about. You know that it has 15 different titles. The $36 billion was taken all from the nutrition title of the bill. Gives you some idea of where people think we can make cuts. This on top of a budget which assumed over $133 billion in cuts to the program already. Last week the House Agriculture uh, Committee marked up a bill with more than $16 billion in cuts to the SNAP program. 
This would kick up to 3 million Americans off the program. Nearly 300,000 kids would lose access to free school lunches. These cuts and their impact for families are unconscionable, in my view, and immoral. Uh, and we will leave families and children in the United States of America hungry. Proponents of these cuts say that it is merely a 2% cut. They suggest that the recent increase in participation is because of fraud and abuse and not of need. I might just let you know that um, the error rate in the food stamp program is 3.8%. Um, go to the IRS. Well, you'll look at 16% uh, plus. They find it unconscionable. This is a quote. These are quotes, and uh, you know, from, uh, they'll be nameless, but quotes from the committed people. They find it unconscionable that we have 45 million in this country getting food stamps. Not that we need to focus on creating jobs for more Americans have the money to afford uh, for their families. They note that, quote, one in seven in the population now think it's okay for someone else to feed them. And that's bad for a culture, bad for a society, and bad for our country, end quote. Let, let's be clear, and I, 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 I'm a believer in nutrition. I'm there. Nobody has to convince me of that. But let's be clear what's happening in the debate today. We are not debating the nutritional value of this program, the policy details of this anti-hunger program. We are debating the moral responsibility of a government to take care of its most vulnerable, to make sure that people have enough food on the table, that kids have enough food uh, to thrive. And it's, it, we, it's not the debate on nutrition, not the nutrition content of foods, marketing, or even accurate labeling. We very well may want to have those discussions, and we should have those discussions, to take a comprehensive look at what our country must do to stem the obesity epidemic that is rampant throughout the socioeconomic spectrum. I'm going to say this at this meeting, and Susan, I know you understand where I'm coming from. I hope others of you do. It is of concern to me that we have this debate at this moment in this toxic environment about the, the existence of the program or working to try to phase the program out. We need to work together to protect the program at the moment. We need to reform the entire system so that everyone has access to healthy food and healthy choices. That's the direction we need uh, to go in. As such, it is critically important that we work together to ensure that program benefits are not cut in the ongoing farm or bill debate. And again, I will reinforce, that is the nature of the debate today. Right now, we are in the midst of it, and it will occur the next several weeks. As it is, swelling malnutrition and obesity rates in America are a double-edged sword, as is pointed out in the, uh, 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 in the uh, uh, charts, uh, and it's aimed right at the generation of, of children. On the one hand, we have middle class and working families are working harder than ever to make ends meet, and poverty, child hunger, and food security are on the rise, uh, and uh, near, in 2010, nearly 15% of American households were food insecure. Nice term for being hungry. This means nearly 50 million Americans, including over 16 million children, face the risk of going to bed hungry. In the third congressional district at South Central uh, uh, Connecticut, the district that I represent, uh, one in seven one in seven people is food insecure, meaning they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Connecticut, and largely because of Fairfield County, is the one of, if not the richest state in the nation. One in seven. On the other hand, we have a growing epidemic of child obesity that is harming both the health and the quality of life for our kids. And even as adult obesity has doubled in recent years, we have seen child obesity triple. We need to do more to improve access to 
affordable and healthy foods, and to make healthy choices easy for everyone. That includes reforming our agricultural and health programs to support the production and the availability of these foods. For example, we should support programs in the Farm Bill that encourage the production of fruits and vegetables rather than the ones that make unhealthy additives like high fructose corn syrup so cheap. And we need to encourage the marketing of nutritious foods to kids and ensure accurate and fair marketing. For example, we know that cereals marketed to kids have 85% more sugar and 65% less fiber than those that are marketed to adults. We also need to make sure that food is labeled as a healthy choice are really, in fact, healthy. We need to, if you will, encourage the fact that we should, uh, and if you're taking a look at the SNAP benefits, we should, which we, which we can do, all you need to do is to make sure that it, the affordability of fruits and vegetables are there. You need more education uh, in this uh, area. You need to emphasize, I gotta tell you, I was in Middletown, Connecticut last Saturday to a kid's food market. I think it's one of the only ones in, in the nation. They provide, and they do this, you, you know, it's a combination of whether you're talking about uh, the city or the state and the private efforts. They've got kids, and I have this one little girl about 10 years old who took me to the farmer's market and she had her uh, $7 worth of coupons to go and buy fruits and vegetables. And I said to her, uh, wh wh where are you going? You tell me, I will buy what you buy. First stop, fresh tomatoes. Knew what she wanted, put them, you know, weighed them, etc. turned her tokens over. From there, we went to the string beans, and she bought string beans. We go again, and she bought blueberries. So I brought home tomatoes, string beans, and blueberries uh, to my house. But the point is, there were eight or nine of these kids, each accompanied uh, one of the elected officials that was there, or the city council people who were there, all of whom, all of whom were buying fresh fruits and vegetables. This little bit of a girl, I, I said to her, tell me what, you know, tell me why, what, what, what do you get? She said, you know, if I buy, sometimes you're very thirsty. She said, so if I buy a piece of fruit, it quenches my thirst. Okay? Okay? That's a good, that's good, that, that's the kind of education that we need. And in fact, it's just not for one group of people that we need that. This needs to be extended across the spectrum of, what we're, uh, uh, of who we are dealing with in, in this country. Uh, we have to address the situation in the marketplace. Right now, the least expensive beverages are often those with the least value to our health, like regular cola or juice drinks that are only 10% juice. But I will tell you that if you're paying $3.49 for juice and $0.79 cents for soda, if you are in a low-income family and you have to stretch the dollar, don't need a rocket scientist to tell you what you're going to buy. You're going to go for the $0.79. Cents. And maybe, quite frankly, one of the things that we ought to look at and one of the things that we ought to consider is a soda tax. Maybe we ought to look at that amongst several other areas that we are looking at in terms of, of nutrition. Look, the point is, this is a critical, critical issue. We need to work together, and I, I, I really, I beg you for your energy and your interest in all of this right now, to help us to protect a critical anti-hunger program that millions of Americans rely on to put food on your table every day. Reasonable, well-intentioned people need to get together, my people in this room, to talk about the nutritional values, how we can make healthy choices of the direction of this country 
um, to go in. I tell you what I don't want to have happen, which is something that's been suggested. That's, let's identify the people on SNAP who buy soda. Let's calculate the cost of it, and then let's deduct that from the program. That's not where Susan Cornell wants to come. That's not where any of you want to come. But in an environment that says this is not an effort that government should be involved in, that's the nature of today's debate. Say flat out, there are many who it's the program they don't want, whether it has a nutritional content or it doesn't have nutritional content. We have to be smart enough to work our way through this so that innocent people and innocent children are not hurt, hurt in some way. 13 million people unemployed in this economy, one in six Americans living below the poverty time. Now is not the time to slash the safety net. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate you being here.